Welcome to Facebook for the Blind, your look at the downfall of Western civilization through the best memes we can find each week. Ladies and gentlemen, it is that time of the week that we like to celebrate Facebook for the Blind, a show for the visually and Facebook impaired. I'm your humble host, Eric. How are you doing? Good. Let's get to the news. More news happened than you can possibly shake a stick at. Basically, Russia, uh, Russia, Russia, followed by Ukraine vowing no capitulation in talks as a massive Russian convoy is nearing Kiev. Uh, blasts are rocking Ukrainian cities all over the place, and it is the dominant news. Additionally, Russia's billionaires have lost $39 billion in just the last 24 hours. Experts agree couldn't happen to a nicer class of people. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> while all that was going on, I don't know if you noticed this little headline that slipped by. Prosecutors in the Trump probe quit after the new DA seems to abandon the plan to seek indictment of the former president. I'd give you more details, but I didn't read any further because I was projectile vomiting. Man, they didn't have to start World War III just to distract from that. Damn, that was, I think, overkill. I they know, could have gotten just... away with a much less dramatic. Usually it would just call for a <laughs> saucy tweet. <laughs> and there is all kinds of confusion. A lot of Americans not really sure how to respond. A lot of liquor stores are refusing to sell Russian vodka. They're really pushing the Ukrainian vodka. And I just wanted to put a shout out there to anybody who knows or cares. Uh, you can send that vodka to George and me, and we will dispose of it properly. Yep. <clears throat> um, I think the big news. Then speak for yourself, fancy. I only drink Burnett's straight out of Louisville. <laughs> Dude, I got Pure my Kentucky curly. vodka. Unflavored, 100 proof Burnett's vodka. <laughs> Warm, warm. <laughs> no the big news, of course, Urban County. Massive amount of Russian protests. The protesters against the war have showed up. Uh, thousands have been arrested in Moscow, and just this week, uh, brave Belarusians protested the invasion of Ukraine, and uh, a lot of them were arrested as well. The latest report I heard was fifty, and it looks like they may have more to protest because. Kiev and Washington believe that Belarus is preparing to join Russia's invasion because it looks like a real fun party. Now, we always try to close out the news with uh, at least one animal story, and there were a ton of them, a ton of them this week. It was hard to pick out the best one. So I'm going to narrow it down to two biggies, um, which is that scientists uh, figured out that uh, magpies can outwit them by helping each other out. They removed each other's tracking devices. They were like tra oh, tracking yeah. magpies. The magpies were like, no, here, I'll help you out, buddy, and got rid of it. So that was kind of funny. Um, and uh, also, oh, one big story that we didn't talk about at all, of course, is uh, the Eurovision Song Contest, because it's announced that Russia is going to participate in the upcoming Eurovision Song Contest in Turin, Italy, despite, you know, invading Ukraine. But there was a quick update on Friday, and they've been disqualified from competing in the Eurovision so Songcast <laughs> since the invasion of the Ukraine. It took them about five days there, but I know a lot of you are close watchers of the Eurovision Song Contest, so I wanted to make sure you had the latest update. It's and such a big deal over there. It's so weird. Indeed. Indeed. And now the last story, of course is uh, the 500-pound bear that has broken into homes all across South Lake Tahoe. That's right, Hank the Tank. Police say they're being inundated with calls about the 500-pound bear, and I think my favorite headline said that he is on a crime spree, which I think is the first time that I realized that a bear could commit crimes. <laughs> um, and then, of course, the update from that, DNA has exonerated Hank the Tank. Yeah, that's right, baby. <laughs> DNA strikes again. And that <laughs> has been uh, the news for Facebook for the Blind for February 28th, 2022. And now getting on to some funny memes going off to my beautiful co-host, Michael Labune and George Cruxhay. Yay. All right. Take it, George. Okay. Uh... Let's start. Let's start. Let's go. Here we go. We're going to start strong. 
Here's uh, uh, looks like Agent Smith from a 1990s Matrix game. Uh, and it says, shut the fuck up about World War Three and eat your little Caesars Batman Calzone. <laughs> 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 which is accurate that's a good look at that shit man mm. i need one <laughs> um this one's great there's a tweet from uh it's the front name is too long i don't know the at it's real hero shit out now <laughs> uh me watching some high fantasy shit i would simply not be corrupted by the magical object if it is actively harming you why don't you just put it down Idiot me receiving psychic damage 23 hours a day from my phone. Oh, ooh, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, it's just like, what's the deal with the ring? Come on, just fucking put it away. <laughs> this is a great crossover meme. I was talking about these. I didn't make this one, but this is fantastic. It's Boom Hauer, uh talking about. It's like my grandmama used to say, man. It's like I must not fear, you know. That fear, man, is a dang old mind killer. I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, Dune. It's a Dune reference. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of really great stuff coming out of the Dune groups uh, lately. Um, here's one. This is uh, not mine all either, but this is great. It's. Uh, uh, up top, it's from Dune. It's a, Use the voice, and at the bottom is a screen from uh, Kung Pao, and the character that goes wee 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 wee, and I'm crying. Stupid uh, movie. That's like 20 years old. <laughs> I love that fucking movie. It's so good. Oh man. Was a tweet from at lunch underscore enjoyer Patrick Noren. He says, Every three months, I think too hard about eating meat and realize how disgusting and inhumane it is. Then, like two hours later, I go to Taco Bell and order the fat fucking idiot combo with a Baja blast and forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, almost exactly what I do. This is great. Um, South Korean professor Cho Jae Won or, uh, invented a toilet that turns poop into energy and pays people digital currency. And these are comments from Reddit, I'm guessing, is shitcoin, the new crypto. <laughs> and, uh, I don't have diarrhea, I have a revenue stream. <laughs> <laughs> now, that, that's an idea <laughs> that I love. Speaking of shit that's 20 years old or more. This is, a, this is a dumb thing that I saw today on Facebook that I love so much. It's uh, Bram Stoker's Bracula, and it's got Brack from Space Ghosts, where, uh, where Dracula's face should be. I like it. And the Brack show. I do love his, uh, do love his stuff. All right. Uh, yeah, uh, that about does it for my round. All right. Great job. And Brack, I can fucking hear that picture. Ah, me too. <laughs> I want to suck your blood. <laughs> fucking, I love Brack so much. Totally. All right. Favorite so character. My, first, my first meme is going to be a shot across the bow at comedian and friend of the show, Jake, or Jay Black. Uh, at Jay Black is funny. Thanks for listening, Jay. But uh, today he tweeted, Hey, millennials and Zoomers who are dealing with your first bout of World War III panic, find yourself a Gen X friend to see you through it. We spent the entirety of our childhood prepping for nuclear war alone while eating Pop-Tarts cold from the foil. We got you. And I can only assume that Jay Black tweeted this in order to perfectly exemplify the Gen X urge to make everything about themselves. <laughs> Absolutely. World War Three panic and Gen X is like, finally, I'm relevant. Middle Age Riot at Middle Age Riot, friend of the show, says, I wonder where Putin got the idea he could invade Ukraine without Republicans trying to stop him. And then there's a picture from a Trump rally of two Republican looking men <laughs> wearing shirts that say, I'd rather be a Russian than a Democrat. So, yeah, who knows? Why would he think he would have political cover from the Republicans? Uh, this is just a picture of Putin on a train looking 
out the window and the reflection of him in the window is Hitler. So I liked it. Nice. Nice. Oh man. I don't know if this is a, this is a great piece of art by somebody named Burson, B-U-R-S-O-N. Uh, so I don't know if you all saw this video, but there's been all these videos of people in uh, Ukraine who are like standing up to Russian soldiers. And this one woman in particular walked up and was holding seeds in her hand, like a package of seeds. And she tries to offer them. um, Yeah. She tries to offer them to this, to this Russian soldier and says, put these sunflower seeds in your pocket so that when you die, sunflowers will grow. And uh, somebody took this rendition and they have a a skeleton in a Russian soldier uniform with sunflowers growing out of its body. Fucking dope. Uh, Uh, James, Urbaniak, friend of the show, James Urbaniak, retweets Representative Clay Higgins. And this is the thing. Representative Clay Higgins' tweet, not that different than Jay Black's tweet. It says, you millennial leftists who never lived one day under nuclear threat can now reflect upon your woke sky. Whatever that means. You made quite a non-binary fuss to save the world from intercontinental ballistic tweets. So that word salad uh, came out of a United States states representative uh james urbaniak wants us to come to his new music festival which i am going to featuring new music by millennial leftists nuclear threat woke sky non-binary fuss <laughs> save the world and my personal favorite ballistic tweets can't can't fucking wait <laughs> get your tickets now uh this says fuck putin but instead of having uh uck it or you see, it just has the Ukrainian flag. Um, I like it. This is, we're getting to the end here, my first round. I think this is actually just important. It's not funny, but it's uh, LA Votes Blue in Georgia said, uh, thank God Trump ended the Iran nuclear deal, pulled troops out of Syria, allowed ISIS to regain power, destabilize the Middle East, set Ukraine up for an invasion. Otherwise, it would have taken Putin decades to do the damage Trump did in one term. Uh, I think this is important because uh, we really, I mean, it's not lost on me that Trump withholding uh, money from Ukraine that they used to buy weapons to defend themselves against Russia is why he was fucking impeached. Yeah. Kathy Griffin, friend of the show. Kathy, if you're not following Kathy Griffin on Twitter and everywhere, absolutely get off the Internet. Thanks for listening, Kathy. Uh, <laughs> she she tweets this or picture of Zelensky, who is just like, the the world hero right now for standing with his people and it says imagine saying to this guy i need you to do me a favor though (laughs) Uh, (laughs) three dictators that gas their own people and hid in a bunker hitler hussein and donald trump uh, (laughs) this one actually made me think for a second because i was like gassed his own people and then i remembered when he shot the cs gas at the peaceful protesters so that he could take a picture holding a bible in front of a church that's right remember that yes i do i don't forget this is this is my last my last meme for the for the uh round and uh this one is captioned just no words needed and it is a picture of Zelensky and his cabinet that selfie video they took that first night that they joined the soldiers on the streets they're still out there still defending ukraine from russian troops and uh from the invasion and it was one of the hardest videos I've ever seen in my whole fucking life. They're just like, hey, we're out here and we're not going anywhere. And it's really, really fucking hard. I'm against war. And that shit was hard. I mean, you know, the, I'm against war, but I'm like more against fucking just invasion and unnecessary, you know, violence like what Putin's doing. And then mm-hmm. at the second frame is Ted Cruz. <laughs> leaving texas you remember when he left texas and went to mexico because texas had a power outage (laughs) so this is ted cruz walking through the airport pulling his luggage just absolutely uh we don't need any more words this says it fucking all right there he couldn't he couldn't be bothered to stay (laughs) with no ac (laughs) Uh, oh my god now for those of you who are new to the show, the first act is normally referred to as the wholesome round, where we normally avoid topics like, you know, war. But, um, you know, some people didn't get a memo, and that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> we never avoid it. It's a constitutional 
<laughs> it's a constitutional wholesome round. <laughs> <laughs> and now, it's not actual wholesomeness. And now I got to tag something that you did because of the order. So I think that's pretty funny. So, uh, yes, indeed. Uh, Representative Clay Higgins did post, and I think it bears repeating, quote, you millennial leftists who never lived one day under nuclear threat can now reflect upon your woke sky. You made quite a non-binary fuss to save the world from intercontinental ballistic tweets. And the response from dictionary.com is, we're not entirely sure what this tweet is supposed to mean, and we're literally the dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> saying what I, I think we all felt we all felt on that one um, that's right all right now one of my favorite things about uh facebook is that it does bring back stuff from a long time ago so this is from six years ago and this is three skulls sort of an x-ray sort of peeking through the window and it's when radiologists take a selfie yeah that's okay that's all there is mm -hmm. uh, Next one is captured uh, from the best and worst of Twitter 2, uh, a.k.a. Sarah Ellis. Uh, two hearts, and it says, Rolled Doll. And she has reposted Andy Ryan saying, Publisher. So you've given us a book about a big friendly giant, one about an enormous crocodile, and another where a granny takes a magic medicine and grows as big as a house. What's new? Rolled Doll. There's this peach. Publisher, is it? It's fucking huge. <laughs> 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 big roll doll nice. fan household here uh this is from friend of the show leslie cavanaugh leslie thanks for listening uh she has reposted truck warrior um with uh me it's not about how many times you fall it's about how many times you get back up officer yeah that's not how field sobriety test works <laughs> mm. uh -huh. Moving on, uh, Kathleen Madigan, <laughs> friend of the show, Kathleen Madigan, on her uh, Pubcast episode 78, Taco Bell's Mexican Pizza says that Dolly Parton is here to save the world with bringing back Mexican pizza at Taco Bell. So see, mm -hmm. we all thought the world was ending, but no, Dolly's got us. Oh, by the way, too, speaking of comedians like Kathleen Madigan, I'd like to point out that uh, President Zelensky uh is uh was formerly a comedian in ukraine he actually had a television mm -hmm. show it was very much like the john stewart of ukraine not the first person to turn a television show into a presidency uh recently in in very recent memory <laughs> mm. um but uh he did do it uh funnier and uh, you know because you know comedian <laughs> in the industry it's like we're all cousins so there you go uh, moving on, uh, Pi Omega Omega, a local fraternity that you may be familiar with, reposts Adam mm -hmm. Sirius uh, at Brow Tweetin says the opposite of formaldehyde is casual Jekyll. Get the fuck out, <laughs> casual de Jekyll. Casual de Jekyll. God damn it. Formaldehyde, yeah. Get the fuck out of here. Your dad. That's terrible. Means. <laughs> oh, I got one from George. It's even worse. <laughs> oh, I bet you do. The Credible Hulk posts a uh, health nerd who says, my wife and I never baby talk to our kids. We use full sentences and a wide vocabulary. My daughter is four and can carry a conversation. Adults are shocked at her social aptitude. My second daughter isn't even two and she uses four syllable words, which is impressive because they're both cats. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, That's a good one. Thought about that long and hard. This next is a two panel with a picture of uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene. And I got to tell you what, I don't normally, this show doesn't normally go after MGT. FB for TB does not go after MGT because it feels a lot like punching a kid on the short bus. It really does. It's just, you know, of course she said something stupid. What else is she going to say? Look at that face. But uh, you'll see here that uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene is on InfoWars and says, they treat me like a crazy person. <laughs> God. Second panel, Jeez. LL Cool J pulling down sunglasses and says, y'all better talk to her before I do, because I'm a hurt her feelings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they treat me like a crazy person. And the best tag on that is, hey, if the tinfoil hat fits, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
going back to one year ago, here's a fun thing, because, you know, uh, MGT was all excited that she was going to CPAC, the Conservatives Public Action Convention. Remember one year ago at CPAC when they had that that floor, that platform that they all spoke from in the shape of a Nazi symbol? That is to say they were literally delivering their message from a Nazi platform. Wasn't that hilarious? Oh, boy, those guys. Uh, and in closing with my last one here, uh, the potentially inappropriate meme for historians and literaries posts Amanda Hackney saying, I totally watched that because it's first ever DNA recovered from extinct miniature elephants of Sicily. It says Jurassic Park, but it's tiny elephants and nothing goes wrong. Same score, but entirely played on kazoos. Instead of Chris Pratt, it's Jack Black. That's right miniature elephant jurassic park and nothing goes wrong coming this fall to abc family <laughs> miniature elephants oh my god i need that right <laughs> back I to you george, 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 that now. oh george yeah george are you in for another round oh uh, uh i i can take uh, it now if you don't no nah, right. not really so uh with everything Deferred happening my... in ukraine picture there <laughs> with everybody with everything happening in ukraine i hope you didn't miss the news that louis ck is in ukraine this that was is, hilarious this is this is fucking weird china friend of the show at jesse m comic <laughs> tweets louis ck getting stuck in kiev is legitimately the greatest comedic timing of all time <laughs> it's it's really true even more weird Wait. is this was all over twitter excuse me yes Go. I was just going to say, George has to close a tag on this. And George, you know what it is. Oh, so, huh? the tag. No, you did no on yeah, I, I did the I did the I did a comedy bit about that. I I saw it and uh, I was doing the yeah, I did a bit about it on stage uh, where I was saying that Louis has to redeem himself by locking uh locking himself in a room with Putin and then standing in front of the door and just masturbating at Putin until he just gives up and he's done. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> and that's the only way to redeem himself. Yeah, actually, uh, you're, you're not the only comedian talking about redemption for Louis C.K. this week. But be before I get I'm there, sure. I got to say, this uh this actually came out there's nothing official about this but it says dear attendance louis ck's performance will take place as planned <laughs> on february 25th and 26th tickets for louis ck show purchased early earlier remain valid for new dates and do not require an exchange so, uh, so this is i don't know i highly doubt if he actually had the show but that was just floating around twitter ian zandy wants us to see that it's louis ck on one side russia on the right side shaking hands and where they're shaking hands what they have in common bombing in ukraine <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> kylie kylie brakeman for the show at dead eye brakeman says obviously not a priority but do we know how louis ck set went <laughs> 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 leftist shark at funeral joke says sean penn and louis ck are in ukraine right now what the fuck is this like a suicide squad situation and masters of none friends of the show never miss a beat wrote louis ck is peace jerker <laughs> which is just uh his the superhero name of what george just described for us <laughs> zach reiner at zach reiner zero says louis ck on stage in the ukraine my daughter's a dumb bitch what it's true why can't i say it roof collapses from missile <laughs> 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 angry black lady imani gandhi friend of the show thanks for listening says, i'm sure people of kiev are gutted about louis ck just gutted and colin t is maniacal v says he really seems to want to expose himself to a Ukrainian audience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, God. Because he exposes himself. Okay. Uh, and, I, and then finally, friend of the show, Zach Ball at Zach V says, if Louis C.K. fights for Ukraine, 
we should forgive him. No. <laughs> <laughs> that no, got 23 way. likes <laughs> <laughs> by the way only 23 people agreed with that <laughs> and you know at least one of them was zach vile uh this was, right. i love this take this is my second to last uh meme for this round it says to avoid war give putin an nft saying he owns ukraine that ah! way putin can brag about having ukraine without actually having ukraine ukrainians can keep doing ukrainian stuff without interference everybody wins in parentheses, it says, I don't know how NFTs work, by the way. And the first comment says, that is exactly how NFTs work. <laughs> 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 and then my final meme is a very famous format. It's three panels. The first panel is uh, Putin riding a bike with a stick. The second panel is him putting that stick in the spokes of the front wheel. The third panel is the bike wrecked, of course, with the stick in the wheel and the guy laying on the ground after making himself fall, and it's Putin, and he says, fucking Ukrainians. So <laughs> that's, uh, if anybody's wondering why all of this is happening in Ukraine, this meme fucking sums it up perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. That's it for me. Back to you, Eric. Awesome. Um, yeah, I am going to do a couple of things. I just realized I got to adjust for time here, so, because uh, of George. So, yeah. George, you still with us? Because I got one for you. Okay, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm here for a second. We're, we're heading out in a couple minutes. All right, as quickly as I can knock these suckers out, then as soon as I get to my button, there we go. <clears throat> so, uh, in honor of the last day of Black History Month, this is a post from Fresh Hell. The quote says, nasty as hell. Says, and we have a man eating in a restaurant with a frown on his face. It says, post-segregation writer Lamar Fudge traveled the South writing scathing food critiques of formerly whites-only eateries. <laughs> Bit of Black History brought to you by Black Witch University. I want to visit the campus of Black Witch University. Nasty as hell. So good. Uh, mm -hmm. And somebody posted, mm -hmm. this has got to be like the best, I can't remember how they put it, but it was like the best uh you know post segregation black comedy ever i don't know i don't remember how to put it i should have written it down uh this is a picture of matthew mcconaughey sucking on a cigarette something fierce and a friend of the show sage earl soper has uh, uh posted millennials living through their third once in a lifetime crisis within five years i, like, I feel that one. <laughs> yeah this particular meme is called Matthew McConaughey smoking. Uh, it's from True Detective, and it uh, apparently normally uh, is used to express great tension or worry. <laughs> so there you go. And uh, George, I want you to tell me if this one's true. Uh, Tales of a Kitchen Witch has posted from Adam. Chefs seem obsessed with removing more and more of the original structure of our foods. Mm -hmm. Salmon mm -hmm. mousse, basil foam, strawberry dust parmesan air where will it end venison deja vu a memory of broccoli a vicious rumor about carrots <laughs> yeah <laughs> there's a there's a lot of stuff like that yeah gastronomy the people that turn foods into foams and all sorts of different strange things it's it's interesting the the air is a really stupid thing that i would never ever pay money for it's so dumb you're not even getting the thing but okay I thought yeah it the was main dumb. problem i thought it was dumb when i just thought he'd made up that line you're telling me parmesan air is real that's it's, even it funnier. could be i know that they do like infusions and some places will serve things with like uh an aromatic that they just like want you to smell before you like eat the regular dish and I'm just, it's so weird that fine dining is completely unhinged Rich people are, are just complete psychopaths. Well, I'm glad you found that mostly, joke so funny. Mostly because of the food. I'm, I'm just going to say, I think eating in those kinds of environments would do it to anybody. I would lose my mind. Just from the company. <laughs> sure. Anyway. Right. Um, yeah. Have a, have a good night, y'all. Uh, much right. love. Love you, George. Yep. Ciao. Break a leg. Love you, George. Yep. Will do. Friend of the show, Craig Smith, posts from Adrian at Adrian Expression. If you are defined as an abomination in the Old Testament, make some noise. <laughs> I liked it quite a bit. It was posted in Pagan and Call of Humor. Thanks for listening, Craig. Uh, Charlie Hester, friend of the show, Charlie Hester, posts this one as relatable. 
close to classy hey, post i guess some people start a task and then just finish it instead of trying to do 14 things at once like a squirrel on cocaine yeah <laughs> is that how you people are i don't know people like that <laughs> yeah uh this next one i like friend of the show chelsea rennert hey rennert good to see you chels hope you're out there having a good time she posts therapy bangs at chaotic they I had a really unfortunate encounter with a mother today who was adamant that C-sections were bad somehow. And uh, she goes, it is not real delivery. And I'm so sorry to the collective whole of society because all I could think to say is, what the fuck is it? Did you know? Craig Smith, friend of the show, Craig, again, Posting Rob Fee, who says, when God closes a door, he opens a window. Our heating bill is outrageous. And six raccoons got in last night. Please, God, this has to stop. A <laughs> <laughs> uh, friend of the show, Jason Barham. Uh, thanks for listening, Jason. He has posted an online death certificate request <laughs> from a uh, county <laughs> in uh, South Carolina. Step one, who is on the death certificate? There are two buttons. One is labeled myself. Uh, so anyway, a lot, of, a lot of people asking questions there. My question, dude, what if I'm not sure? <laughs> and he said, well, in the state of uh, North Carolina, you can apparently order your own. And I was like, what a great gift idea. <laughs> <laughs> what'd, you do for my, what'd you do for your birthday? I got myself a gift. I want to point out Jeff. Jeff just Jeff just put speed up on on his profile picture. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Whoa, man! All right, all right, all right. Let's see how you are. All right, a uh, friend of the show, Amber Wood, has posted uh, this. Uh, it looks like plague costumes, those big sort of hooked nose yeah. gas mask things, and some flat round hats and some long drapey black stuff, and it's just a group of six seven shadowy figures here and it says girls night but instead of going to the bar we roam the town in this and that was posted in nerds with vaginas and this nerd without a vagina likes that a lot i was like that that would be fun i'd do that i'd join that crew down to the last five uh friend of the show denatra Phil, philpot boyd brown thanks for listening to denatra says i've been i've read that being a woman means whispering what the fuck to yourself daily Okay, first of all, I didn't know we were supposed to be whispering it. <laughs> and uh, if you've met Denatra, that one's funny because it's true. Uh, friend of the show, Carrie Keller, pointed this one out. And this is actually last, but it's going to take a bit. Uh, she has posted one more reason to love Corvids. Uh, and it is all about, I accidentally created an army of crow bodyguards. Am I liable if my murder attempts murder? Uh, so long story short, late 20 something living in the Portland, Oregon area had a pretty intense emo goth phase as a tween that I thought I had grown out of. But a couple months ago, I was watching a nature program on our local station about crows the program mentioned that if you feed and befriend them, crows will bring you small gifts. And my emo phase came back full force. And I figured that if I was furloughed, had lots of time, why not make some friends with crows? My plan worked a little too well, and the resident five crows in my neighborhood have turned into an army 15 strong. At first, my neighbors didn't mind, and they enjoyed it. They're mostly elderly and were into bird watching anyway. Uh, they thought that uh, having the crows following me around was kind of funny. But lately, the crows have started defending me. My neighbor came over for a socially distanced chat, and the crows started dive bombing her. They would not stop until she left my yard. They didn't make physical contact with her, but they got very close. Am I liable if these crows injure someone since I fed them? <laughs> I obviously can't control the crows. I would rather them not attack my neighbors. But since I technically created this nuisance, could I be financially on the hook for any injuries? To be clear, they're not aggressive 100% of the time. It's just if the neighbors, uh, uh, someone gets close to me or my property. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then the follow-up, two months later... <laughs> So to make a long story short, uh, I called our local Audubon Society. I didn't think feeding the crows was so bad, suggested that the neighbors also start feeding them. So essentially they became better socialized. The plan worked and the crows are now a beloved part of the community. They have no recent dive bombings. Most amazingly, the crows may have legitimately saved our neighbor. 
Our city had a big ice storm recently and uh, a man slipped on his driveway, couldn't get back up. The crows started going ballistic and were making noise, more noise than we'd ever heard before. A different neighbor went outside to see what was up and found the gentleman in his driveway. Neighbors mostly okay, just some serious bruises. <laughs> Needless to say, the crows have been getting some high value food <laughs> since then. Yeah. That's awesome. I know. And that's why I come to Facebook. The animals. Yeah, thing. I love it. Yeah. Back to you, Michael. All Sam. right. Yes, sir. So starting up round three, the penultimate round, leaving only our one meme round post with the most. So uh, this says, I'm deleting Instagram. And then it's a picture of a text conversation that says, starts off with, rate a pickup line for me. Then the person says, got you. The first person says, girl, are you from Mississippi? Because you're the only miss who's piss I sippy. <laughs> the, response is, <laughs> the response is negative 10,000 out of 10. Delete, delete. <laughs> <laughs> I, you can hear the urgency like as soon as they read that. No, this is no. a terrible pickup line. Nash Flynn, friend of the show at It's Nash Flynn says, a new thing I'm trying when my brain is being a real asshole is reminding it that I have it caged inside my skeleton and therefore it is a prisoner. <laughs> <laughs> this is hilarious. This is a picture of Barack Obama who is explaining something with his hands like he likes to do to Leonardo DiCaprio. And th they're on the lawn of the White House. But Leo is standing with his arms folded and he looks really serious and a little skeptical. And his caption is saying, Leo, there was room. I'm telling you, we all saw it. She was lying. <laughs> and this is the friend of the show. <laughs> Classical fuck who said he still doesn't believe it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, new, a new page, new friend of the show I'm enjoying is Ominous Positivity. Oh, yeah. And they, uh, they, they tweet at Sad Queer for Life who says, might fuck around and show myself the same compassion and understanding I'd instinctively have for a good friend or loved one. <laughs> <laughs> kind of an idea we're kicking around today. Yeah. Glow fuck yourself. <laughs> Friend oh, yeah. of the show, glow fuck yourself. <laughs> That's a picture of a young man who is angrily holding up a picture on his phone of a dragon. He's holding up his phone to the camera, and you see on the phone there's a picture of a dragon. And uh, not sure why he's angry until you see that on his right arm he has a tattoo of that dragon and of the cell phone. <laughs> so his tattoo artist tattooed the whole thing phone and picture instead of just the picture uh weedy harry friend of the show lil arab says eminem look if you had one shot or one opportunity to seize everything you ever wanted in one moment would you capture it or just let it slip me oh i'd let it slip for sure <laughs> oh all right me yeah sorry <laughs> i love the honesty this is a. Uh, this is from Awkward Muffy, acquaintance of the show, who has a, uh, a crudely drawn, crudely drawn cartoon of a man who is uh, looks like pulling the chair out. Uh, you're pulling his chair out for a woman, and motioning for her to sit down. And it says, "Him, can I push your stool in?" And her, let's see how dinner goes first. Awkward Muffy, we're still deciding if we like you. Uh, ah. after a long Monday and it has, this is an aisle sign. It looks, looks like a Walgreens to me. And it says me after a long Monday and it says baby needs beers and wines. Because ah. <laughs> there's both baby needs and there is beers and wine. Same aisle. <laughs> I have two more for this round. Friend of the show, Blue Face Nilo C says, motherfuckers be named James and it only be one dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that took a second. This is so fucking stupid. <laughs> like, just because there's an S, it's plural. I fucking love yeah. it. All right, and then my last meme for the for round three, leaving only my post with the most, is, of course, Trash Can Paul. We couldn't do it without you, Trash Can Paul. If you're not following Trash Can Paul, fuck off. It says, ah. steal a man's wallet and make him poor for a day. Teach a man to play with model trains and make him poor for a life. <laughs> There's a picture of a model train. 
Nice. <laughs> this is a deep cut against people who like model trains. They're, they've, they've been getting away with it for way too long, all right? Nobody makes jokes about them. <laughs> <laughs> all right, back to you, Eric, for round three before I post with the most. All right, yo. Oh, so many things. So many, so many good things. Ah, uh, damn it. I, and I, I had these all organized and I copied them back. I, I'm not going to make excuses. <laughs> um, so we'll just, we'll just do our best. Yay. All right. Uh, so, oh, wait, where's the button? Button, button. Who's got the button? There it is. <sighs> Hi. Speed up. You're hilarious, buddy. Um, Eric, I can't help you. You got to do it. Yeah. This first, is, uh, this first one's from, uh, it's a, the meme from, community and uh we have uh the girl looking into the camera and uh it uh is captioned nate last night on hashtag euphoria she says i can excuse physical abuse but i draw the line at musical theater <laughs> i don't know if you heard about the musicals on, on euphoria but i don't watch the show and i heard about them that everybody was talking about uh next we have a uh, friend of the show lincoln macula hey thanks for listening lincoln uh, he has reposted Mark Laidlaw saying the first line of almost any story can be improved by making sure that the second line is, and then the murders began. In the beginning, <laughs> God created the heaven and the earth, and then the murders began. <laughs> the Phantom of the Opera did exist, and then the murders began. Maimon died today, and then the murders began, and then the murders began. And it was a bright, cold day in April, and the clocks were striking 13. And then the murders began. So it's true. It's a good one. Keep yeah. going. Yeah. I'm, and next time I hear, you know, in the beginning, uh, God created the heavens and the earth, I'm going to think that right away. That's and technically true, too. First chapter. It's right there in the first chapter. Yeah. Or yeah, is, that this first, is, canon. Or is that a book? It's the first. They call those chapters books. <laughs> All right, moving on. Folk punk shit posting to the reckoning. Elizabeth Schmidt posted, and uh, our friend of the show George Cruikshank actually posted this, and then took a world of hurt for it. Uh, Michael Scanlon is still on strike. Posts youth pastor idly strumming a few chords on the guitar. I know that you juggalos love violent J, but i'd like to tell you about a loving J and the 12 dudes in his insane crown posse oh my god it's so stupid <laughs> to, which, to which friend of the show lex Harmon came back with you deserve another 30-day ban for this <laughs> yeah agreed <laughs> Dude, and the best part, the best part of all of this, we're all laughing and somebody did a, um, but actually, uh, I believe that uh, George has freedom of speech, Eric. <laughs> oh, no. Not that asshole. The Juggalos get a lot of love on this show. Like, what was it last month I shared the meme that was Riley Reed in the repurposed porn meme and, and she had Juggalo face paint on and it said, oh, no, you're going to make me whoop, whoop. <laughs> 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 we get to talk about juggalos a lot on this show quite a bit hey i you know i mean how many people do we know with tattoos of juggalo symbols on them show of hands zero the whole, i know the whole zero. room it's a whole they just haven't told you because <laughs> they know you're a hater <laughs> absolutely everybody yeah you're exactly right <laughs> seriously boy i thought your mom told you by now so anyway <laughs> all right moving on moving on moving on uh, this is a great story. Renan Hirschberg, comedian and friend of the show, Renan uh, Hirschberg. Thanks for listening to the show, Renan. Has a quick story here. Boarding a, a plane to Israel. First leg of the trip to Israel, a country I was excited to visit, as it was the one place in the world where uh, I said my name. People didn't immediately think I was having a stroke. Being allowed to board a plane to Israel involves several obstacles. The main one is being that the El Al agent will quiz you as if you're a contestant on Jewish Jeopardy. What was Moses's brother's middle name? The hot Israeli woman at the counter asked when I showed her my passport. Which daughter did Noah have sex with? Israel is the only country where the quiz you where they quiz you on a book to get in. When you go to New Zealand, they don't force you to answer Lord of the Rings trivia. <laughs> what color was Gandalf's staff? 
About 20 minutes into this merciless Hebrew school reenactment, I wanted to point out that my level of Jewishness was such that, <laughs> that this was a performance, that I should only like be led on board for the effort, but I received an Academy Award. Why are you traveling to Israel? I'm performing stand-up comedy. How long have you been performing stand-up comedy? About 15 years. I don't know your name. Have you been on Netflix? No. And people come to see you in Israel? No, they come to see another comic I'm going with. No one knows me. She eyed me with suspicion. It's a real blow to your ego to find out that your lack of achievements will raise red flags at the airport. Apparently, my career has moved at such a slow pace, it's more believable that I'm a terrorist than an action than a comedian. I looked away. She said, you don't seem very funny. I said, look. That smoke for what I thought was a curt tone. I'm Jewish. I don't observe any of the customs or practice. I go to synagogue only once a year, and even then it's just a lie I tell my mom. And with Shawshank Redemption parole scene abruptiveness, my passport was stamped and I was allowed to board. <laughs> Turns out that by admitting that I barely followed any Jewish customs, I had inadvertently proven I was Israeli. <laughs> That's That's awesome. Fantastic. Moving on, uh, economic left repost Captain Sicko. It would be extremely funny to sanction a bunch of Russian oligarchs and watch the housing market in London and New York crash and burn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would be actually. In Florida, uh, dude, holy fuck! Right. Friend of the show, Tara Sullivan, uh, reposts Ida Skabeans, saying, as I'm watching husbands and fathers say goodbye to their loved ones, their children, not knowing if they will ever see them again, I just cannot believe that for two years we've been watching people cry and protest after over having to wear a fucking mask. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Uh, literary Jokes and Puns, or GTFO, posts plagiarism, getting into trouble for something you didn't do. <laughs> that's a hot take <laughs> I don't know, right? a lot of hot takes on the day of the invasion and none finer than my very favorite from matt graining of simpsons uh fame he has posted the whole simpsons family uh all holding ukrainian flags which are a big blue stripe and a big yellow stripe and you will notice that the blues and yellows are the same as the Simpson family's skin and hair. Look at <laughs> look at Marge. Which Marge is not holding a flag. No. Marge, Marge is just standing there just, and her hair turns into the flag and her I face guess. the blue and her face turns into the yellow. <laughs> it's just perfect. And like see, I, I wish I could do a Maggie because she's got the two flags there, and that's what I can hear is like but that's I thought this one was great. I know you can't see it, but I, I hope it conveys it. Um, Denatra Philip Brown making a second appearance on the show says, uh, dear Kyle Rittenhouse, I will buy you a first class ticket to Ukraine to go defend some property. <laughs> and, uh, there was quite a bit of discussion on that, but it basically came down to, he'll just go to the Russian side. Yeah, that's, that's right. Friend of the show, Susan Barrett says she is guilty because she has posted Emma Salisbury say breaking every woman in your life now has at least a small crush on Vladimir Zelensky and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it <laughs> <laughs> guilty several of my friends resonated pretty hard with that a little over halfway through here uh semi snowflakes uh is the title of this posted by jeff carver he says well those freedom truckers sure picked a bad week to try and get attention for being victims of a tyranny huh <laughs> go to washington yeah freedom Convoy. yeah right yeah good luck guys yeah excellent point uh this is one of my favorite things i don't know if you said uh read this from at joshua potash who posts under the name read the dispossessed by ursula Le Guin. i agree uh, the future is a very weird place. Ukrainians are uploading videos on TikTok about how to drive abandoned or captured Russian military vehicles. And we got a hot woman here in, uh, in a very responsibly dressed in a fur parka with a hat. And uh, she does indeed look like she is uh, operating this. And because I have so many friends who are um, actually and post links, I do have the link to this video. She legit is teaching you how to start up a Russian APC. And I'm going to watch it again after the show. So just request it and I'll put the link in the doodly do. Hey, here's a memory. Uh, I really like this one. I love how Facebook brings back the memories. It's a picture of tanks tanks uh swarming in on streets i mean all th three three deep here and it says in a highly provocative mo move russian tanks 
took part in a Canadian parade 300 yards away from the U.S. border. Now, this is seven years ago. So, oops, got that backwards. Actually, it was U.S. tanks that were 300 yards from the Russian border in Estonia. I guess we can all stop worrying right now. Just to remind you how this hornet's nest got kicked over and what was poking it with a stick. Just, just a slight reminder. They're like, oh, this is so, so no, 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 no. This has all started a long time ago. Uh, so anyway, probably one of my favorite takes of all time is from the horse whisperer, spelled like a ah, horse throat, uh, at the real horse. So it's pretty bad time to be a disastrously bad real estate developer with hundreds of millions in debt coming due and your primary source of laundered money currently banned from world banks. It's like, that was my happy thought. My happy thought was for that disastrously bad real estate developer with all those millions coming due. <laughs> um, a lot of good stuff about Ukrainians posting things. One thing they've been changing their street signs to confuse the soldiers. They've actually yeah, people awesome. to take down the signs, which I think is totally awesome because I learned that maneuver from bed knobs and broomsticks, a movie that none of you should maybe have seen. Anyway, it's way before your time, but absolutely fantastic. But uh, Ukrainian soldiers have been taking down street signs and direction markers to confuse the Russian invaders. These digital signs here uh, are pictured uh, over a highway, all lit up, and uh, they read, go fuck yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> seems to be the phrase <laughs> <laughs> that ukrainians are putting on a lot of stuff which is pretty good um this is a really interesting take from a uh, friend of the show danielle peverly uh she says i saw a post this morning credit unknown but i think this is pretty accurate the ukraine and russian crisis in simple terms for those who have no idea what is going on there uh i uh ukraine used to be in an abusive relationship with russia feeding him, letting him use her car, giving him whatever he asked for until she built up the confidence to call it quits way back in 1991. Now, since then, Ukraine has been working on herself, becoming a strong, independent woman with help from friends like France, America, Poland, offering her support, loaning her money, helping her find her way. Ukraine has been, been enjoying being single for 30 years, and looking forward to continuing to grow and create new friendships. Now, Russia being the toxic ex that it wants, says it wants her back and doesn't want her meeting new countries. So a couple of weeks ago, Russia started sitting in front of Ukraine's house. And when friends asked him what he was doing there, he just said, oh, nothing, just uh, getting a little exercise, that's all. And uh, after her friends told her that Russia was potentially getting ready to do something bad to her, he said, they're lying. They just want you to be scared of me. And that's not what it is. And then yesterday, Russia broke into Ukraine's house, beating her up, taking advantage of her while on live stream and double dog daring any of her friends to do something about it. If they do want the smoke, Russia got the thing on him. Got that thing. I don't understand that last line. It's not in English, but uh, yeah, I'm going to close it there. That's my. All right. My really good metaphor. Not quite as upbeat as I normally like to go. My, my post with the most is uh, kind of weird did really well on twitter but it was it's actually a converse a text conversation that i captured uh between me and my friend my friend wrote uh-oh the kids in basic training are posting videos of their meals it's bad they're feeding them crab legs and steak we're oh! we're going to we're going to war aren't we and i wrote haha no i got crab legs and steak too oh wait fuck i went to war right after that <laughs> 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 oh wow <laughs> but i i will say this uh just so that i'm not spreading a lot of panic for no reason uh having the everybody gets surf and turf on friday in the military in, in the army uh they have for decades it's literally the only like really really good reason to join the military <laughs> that there has been for decades it's, it's it's a big selling point for recruiters i promise you they always give you steak and crab legs shrimp on Friday and free ice cream, by the way. That's fun. That's it. Oh my god, <laughs> I've never heard that that pitch. Before. <laughs> Best oh wait, result. fuck! I did realize I was like, no, nah, I got that in basic training too. Shit, less than a year later, I was definitely in a combat zone. <laughs> That's fucking true. Insane. <laughs>
All right, getting to my post with the most. Uh, granted, I have a different kind of a club here, a lot of librarians. So when, oh, hey, not that. When Nicholas Poole posted this, it spread like wildfire. Uh, bloody hell, looking at a message from the Ukraine Library Association concerning the cancellation of their forthcoming conference. It basically says, we will reschedule just as soon as we have finished vanquishing our invaders. Ukrainian, Ukrainian librarians, I salute you. Nice. I think yeah, that's beautiful. We'll conclude an episode of Facebook for the Blind for February 28th, 2022. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank Love you, George. Thanks for listening to an episode of Facebook for the Blind. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. <laughs>